is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Unette Gentry. News 25, local news you can count on. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, a rumps optometrist since 1990, offering full spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. This segment of the news is brought to you by Silver State Health, bringing quality medical and psychiatric care to Pahrump. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. All right. Well, pharmaceutical company Pfizer says that they are moving forward with sending their COVID-19 vaccine to receive FDA approval. The company hopes to file for emergency use and authorization. Last week, the company released early clinical trial data showing its vaccine is more than 90% effective. Another vaccine that has shown huge results in the past few days is Moderna's clinical trials, which have resulted in a 94.5% percent effective rate. The company plans to apply for the FDA authorization soon after it accumulates more safety data later this month. This is far sooner than expected, and the companies are aiming at possibly having vaccinations begin by late this year. And the Nevada Department of Transportation recently completed a $59 million two-year upgrade of State Route 160 in southwest Clark County, the critical stretch of rural highway, which averages about 8,500 vehicles daily, serves as the main travel corridor between Las Vegas and Pahrump. The project widened a six-mile stretch of asphalt highway from two to four travel lanes between mile markers 16 and 22, creating a safe passing lane for slower moving traffic while altering the roadway geometry for fewer twists and turns. And that works. And additionally, they are rehabilitating 22 miles of deteriorating roadway from roughly the Nye County line to the Mountain Springs community. This vital route serves as a crucial economic link between Las Vegas and Pahrump. The contracting team undertook 58 blasting events that necessitated temporary shutdowns of the highway in about several different directions, ranging from 30 minutes to 120 minutes in both of those directions at various times. The first blasting event occurred back on September 24th in 2018, with the last one taking place in July of 2019. Meanwhile, other project enhancements consisted of placing five miles of raised concrete median barrier, installing new signage and flattening side slopes for safer turnouts. Nearly 30 acres of raw desert was hydro seeded and nearly 800 new tree saplings were planted and installed with 1,000 yuccas being salvaged and replanted. Also, the Mountain Springs community received new frontage roads, improved intersection lighting and emergency signal for Clark County Volunteer Fire Station 79. Additional improvements called for new cattle guards and underground wildlife undercrossing near mile marker 18 with 10 miles of combined deer and tortoise fencing. Crews placed nearly 600 boulders, 14,000 cubic yards of riprap, and nearly 2,000 tons of decorative rock for landscaping and aesthetics that also helps with erosion control and stormwater runoff. The project additionally placed flood control channels box culverts, and five miles of storm drainage pipe up to four feet in diameter. Contractors in total used 2.4 million pounds of reinforced steel. The project, which began back in September 2018, created nearly 300 direct, indirect, direct, and induced total local jobs for our area. Well, Spring Mountain Motorsports Country Club has been working with the Bureau of Land Management and Nye County to support local Air Force operations and training here in Prump. If you've noticed more aircraft activity in the sky over our community, this is why. The Department of the Air Force 943rd Rescue Group has been conducting combat search and rescue training this month here in Southern Nevada. The training, expected to end before Thanksgiving, is the reason you may be seeing more aircraft in the sky. 
The training builds on high-end combat search and rescue abilities that the 943rd Rescue Group has developed to meet warfighter requirements defined by the National Defense Strategy. This training allows search and rescue Air Force reservists to conduct real-life scenarios that will prepare them for future deployment. This is the first time the Rescue Group has performed this training in Pahrump. And stay tuned, there is much more News 25 when we return. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, a key Trump administration financial player plans to leave early. The president-elect is moving forward with economic plans and Home Depot is buying HD supply holdings. Popping our news, one of President Trump's key financial players plans to leave his post early. Jay Clayton tells reporters he will step down from his position as chairman of the SEC at the end of the year. His term does not expire until June. Clay faced criticism for being too soft on Wall Street. However, he did get $14 billion in fines from companies with bad business practices. President-elect Joe Biden is moving forward with his economic plans. On Monday, Biden met virtually with leaders from the UAW, along with the CEOs of General Motors, Microsoft, Target, and Gap. That discussion centered around the economic recovery. And Home Depot will pay $8 billion to buy HD Supply Holdings. HD Supply was a subsidiary of Home Depot more than a decade ago. Home Depot will buy HD shares for around $56 a piece. That deal puts the two companies back under one roof. Thanks, Angela. And turning back now to more local news, Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue's administration office is temporarily closed to the public under the governor's orders. The burn moratorium was lifted starting at 8 a.m. Friday, November 13th, but no new burn permits are being issued at this time until the office reopens to the public. Existing permit holders will be allowed to resume burning, but must follow the Pahrump Town Ordinance Number 28. Fire reports and other general questions can be answered by calling 775-727-2832. Well, CARES Act funding for Nye County still remain available, although some of the deadline dates have changed. Samantha Kramer, Nye County Grants Administrator, reported that there has been an increase of applications for CARES Act funding for the public program. There have now been 100 applications received. As of October 29th, the total fund has a balance of $4,039,673.21 remaining. Application deadlines have changed for the public and small business programs. The deadline is now December 1st, not December 4th, to have a completed application filed. If you have a business or a nonprofit that has been affected by the pandemic, you may be eligible for funding. To find out if you qualify, visit nycounty.net and search CARES Act funding. You may qualify for assistance for rental, mortgage, utility, and food assistance to the community. Small businesses may qualify for assistance for PPE and more. You can also receive help with applying. Deadlines are approaching, and there have been no notifications from the federal government that there will be extensions on the funding. Kramer plans to bring forth items to reallocate funds that have not been spent at the December 15th meeting. The Nye County Commission approved canvassing the returns from the general election. The final turnout in Nye County was 74.84%. Active registered voters, 33,967. Total turnout, 25,427. Election day turnout, 2,697, with an early turnout of 8,886. Mail-in ballots, 13,844. And stay tuned, we'll be right back with more local news ahead for you. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by Canyon Ridge Periodontics. Give them a call at 702-966-0302. Welcome back. As college students prepare for Thanksgiving break, extra precautions should be taken to protect loved ones at home. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Joseph Cabaza says students attending classes in person may fall into a higher risk category of being carriers of COVID-19. 
kid, anyone who's in full-time school, um, that's going to be a bit higher risk. Now, I think part of the challenges of, of school-aged uh, children and, and young adults in college is that they tend to be ones who are going to be minimally symptomatic if they are uh, infected with COVID-19. To reduce the potential of unknowingly spreading coronavirus, students should limit social activities 7 to 14 days before coming home. They should also be on the lookout for COVID-19 <laughs> symptoms like fever, cough, and body aches. And when symptoms are present, travel should be avoided. If COVID-19 testing is offered at school, it's a good idea for students to get tested a few days before they leave for break. And if they're positive, stay put. While traveling, a face mask, social distancing, and frequent hand washing is recommended. Once they arrive, students who have not been able to isolate before returning home should wear a mask indoors, especially around loved ones who are elderly or have a compromised immune system. That's a tough sell to wear a mask at, your, at family gatherings or perhaps in your own home. Uh, but it's really an extra precaution to protect the most um, uh, vulnerable. Experts also advise college students to have a separate bedroom and bathroom while home for break to further reduce virus transmission risk. Well, if you have a good sturdy fence in your backyard, we've got just the dog for you. Darby O'Donnell is at Desert Haven Animal Society to make the introductions. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Sadie. Sadie is a one-year-old healer mix. Uh, she's mainly all white, but she has some very cute little freckly black spots on her back and a little dot on her tail and then black ears. Um, she is very sweet. She is super loving. She likes to be cuddled. Um, unfortunately, Sadie was an owner surrender. They say that she definitely prefers to have a yard that with very secure fencing because she is an escape artist, but she's super sweet. They say that she's very loving, um, really well on a leash, does well with all family members and everything. She just likes to escape. So if you are somebody who, um, who wants to go and have her in your home and have a very secure fencing, she's definitely the dog for you. Come and see Sadie or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society. Go and give them a call ahead of time, 775-751-7020, so you can make an appointment to visit her, or you can always look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler from KPVM Channel 25. We're on location at the corner of Wilson and East. It's the Never Forgotten Animal Society, a great animal shelter, and they can use some help. In fact, they're having a benefit this Sunday at Sullivan's at 2450 West Mesquite. Sullivan's Pub was hosting, and uh, the house band uh, Ear Candy is going to be uh, there with their, all their gear. You're going to want to bring your own guitar, your own axe, bring your own keyboard. Uh, but uh, other than that, good to go. Great place to connect with musicians and support a really great cause. They'll be taking donations of dog food, cat food, anything you can think of animal related that could, could benefit a shelter and of course cash. So uh, Never Forgotten Animal Society, it's at Sullivan's Pub 2450. Uh, West Mesquite. It's happening Sunday from 3 to 7. Tell you about the weather you can expect for this week and into the weekend when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. How are you tonight? Did you know it's Danny DeVito, Rock Hudson, and the little dog that played Toto's birthday today? How about that? Let's all celebrate. Celebrating in Fernley at 70 degrees, feeling pretty awesome in Fernley. Uh, 45 for a low tonight. Fallon looking at 75 degrees for a high, 46 for a low. Carson City, you're cooling off a little bit. 67 degrees is your high mark today, 46 for a low. Out in uh, Tonopah, 63 degrees for a high, and then just flipped it around. It's a mirror image, 36 for a low. Goldfield, you're looking at 64 degrees for your high today, 36 for a low. Out in Beatty, uh, warming up, 74 degrees. Mmm, feeling good. And 45 for a low tonight. Amargosa, 78 degrees as a high mark, 49 for a low. Out in Las Vegas, they got all the way up to 77 majestic degrees. And it'll be cooling off to 54 tonight as the dice cool off into the evening. Death Valley. 88 degrees for a high today. Great time to be in Death Valley. 64 for a low. And here in the paradise of Pahrump, well, 72 degrees 
is our current temperature. It's off the mark, just about 70 degrees from our high today of 79 degrees. Was a bit gusty. We had some winds uh, south southeast out uh, up into 17 miles per hour. It's kind of woo. <laughs> Shiver me timbers. 11% humidity. Not too bad. Uh, sunrise this morning at 6:23 a.m. and it's set about a half hour ago at 4:34. PM just getting darker and darker earlier and earlier. I don't mind the stars coming out though. That's nice. 72 degrees, our current temperature, as I said, uh, low tonight, we'll be heading down to 56 degrees. And some winds kicking up to 14 miles per hour on the uh, southeast with humidity running about 20%. All right, let's look at the week ahead. So there's some rough spots, some new spots. There's fun stuff to look at. Windy on Wednesday, 22 mile per hour gusts. That will be uh, significant, but the temperature's not too bad, 72 degrees. Then it'll cool off for the rest of the week. Uh, about five degrees, we'll be seeing highs in the upper 60s and lows in the uh, 30s and uh, uh, low 40s. So uh, interesting stuff to look at. A little bit windy on Saturday. I don't know why. Friday might see some clouds, but probably no rain. It's just amazing. It's the weather report. It's Unette and Deanna. Back to you, ladies. Thanks so much, John. Well, it's almost Thanksgiving. I know it is. Yeah. And there is a special uh, deal going on. I know that Quality Signs and Designs is having a free Thanksgiving turkey giveaway dinner thing. And so um, if you would like to enter that, you just need to email sales at qualitysignsnb.com. They're going to be making the announcement on Thursday. I've got a couple other surprises going on there, too, as well. Nice. And, of course, if you would like to enter the Project COVID-19, which is the free makeover for November, all you need to do is send us your nominee's name and a little bit about them and why they deserve a makeover from Simply Divine uh, Salon. And that's Elizabeth Bryant and, of course, uh, Carol um, there is doing the manicure. So you can email Deanna at kpvm25.tv. That's D-E-A-N-N-A -N -N -A at kpvm25.tv. And uh, we do want to let everybody know that we do have the COVID numbers for overnight, and that was uh, 35 uh, positive test results um, for people who took tests, and that's 31 here in Prompt. So we hope, uh, of course, all the time that those numbers are going down. Yes. Be safe and healthy out there, everyone. Remember, wash your hands. Definitely. And uh, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. And from all of us here at KPVM and AIDS Country Radio, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next newscast. Good night. Good night.